yeah, thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you, Kevin and Rachel, for uh, inviting me to do this. Um, yeah, so I've I've been really busy for the past few weeks, um, as everybody has. Um, but I think I've been particularly busy because um, uh, the e-learning unit have had to um, uh, within three weeks we had to um, put together some entirely online, automatically marked exams for our um, first year students and support quite a few service courses around the university. Um, our exam period, I think, finishes at the end of this week, so uh, the light is finally visible at the end of the tunnel. Um, so, yeah, um, I've been asked to talk a little bit about uh, numbers and how we use it. Um, 13 minutes isn't a huge amount of time to um, uh, go into detail, but I'll just talk about what we've done. Um, so here are my slides. Um, so Numbers is uh, an open source e-assessment system um, designed from the start for mathematical subjects. Um, uh, it's developed basically by me at, at Newcastle. Um, we've been using it for about 10 years. Um, I can't remember exactly when we first started using it. Um, but it's also used around the world, um, I, th I think. Uh, we're in the, the hundreds of institutions now. Um, so the way it works, um, I, I, I know from looking at the participant list there are many numbers users um, watching but I'm sure there are people who haven't done any e-assessment before. Um, so the idea is that um, we have a web-based question editor, um, you then collect together um, an exam, we call it a, a, an assessment, um, give that to students somehow um, the students answer the questions uh, in a web browser again, um, they get immediate feedback on what they've done um, and then the, the scores come straight back into your uh, learning environment automatically. Um, so the important things um, about e-assessment and I guess numbers in particular um, is that it, uh, ease of use is very important for us that that both lecturers and students can start using numbers uh, very easily without too much training. Um, the really key thing I think has come up a lot in the chat um, during this session um, is that randomized questions are really useful. Um, in summative assessment so that students can't uh, collude with each other as easily but also um, formatively so that students get a, a, an inexhaustible supply of practice questions on their uh, on their topics. Um, the automatic marking is is really making the most use of a computer. Um, if the student has answered a question and a computer could work out if it's right or not, tell them immediately rather than having to go off to their lecturer um, and wait. We have, we have a, I think, a seven day turnaround for uh, feedback on um, student work. Um, and then finally, the reason numbers exist and the reason stack exists is that maths is uh, it's sort of a unique subject uh, in the things that e-assessment needs to do. Um, so numbers has a load of stuff to do with uh, supporting mathematical assessments. Um, so this is what numbers looks like. Um, this is uh, our demo exam. Um, you get given some kind of prompt and uh, then you have to enter an answer and then you get some immediate feedback um, and I'm going to try and do some maths live here we go so as I'm typing here um, I'm get uh, six blah 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 I'm, I'm differentiating this thing um, all right I'm going to press submit and see if I get, get it right or not okay there we go um, so as I'm typing I get a, a preview of um, how my uh, answer was interpreted um, I've gone too far here. Uh, yeah, and I got some immediate feedback. So that's the, the rough idea. You, you do a test, you get some feedback. Um, this is what the question editor look like. I think it's really important that it's easy to um, write questions. Um, I know back in the day, e assessment systems would be you write a Perl script um, and then some horrendous arcanery has to happen. Um, we've tried as best as possible to make it uh, straightforward to write numbers questions. Um, so, because I know that some people will be asking, um, th these are the kinds of questions you can ask. You can ask the student to enter a mathematical expression. Um, uh, that's deemed to be correct if it's equivalent to 
an answer that you have given. Um, you can also um, specify some things about the format of it. You can ask for a number, you can ask for a matrix. Um, there's a load of kinds of multiple choice question, um, which we've used quite a lot this exam period. Um, good for testing conceptual understanding. Um, there's a short text input, which we almost never use. Um, and a really important feature of numbers is um, that you can make your own question types up and you can extend numbers um, if there's something missing. So what you need to use it um, for, for formative use, if you don't care too much about uh, measuring what students are doing, um, you can just create your questions and send the link to students um, and they'll do it and the data doesn't go anywhere. Um, for summative use, where you want to award credit for things, um, we have uh, an LTI tool which you need to uh, install locally. Um, basically, all of the VLEs these days support LTI, um, so Blackboard, Canvas, Moodle, everything. Um, that's some software which sort of manages the, the connection between um, a student clicking a link from your VLE um, and then show them the exam and store the data and manage stuff like how many attempts they're allowed. Um, make sure their data doesn't get lost if their computer crashes, that kind of thing. Um, for work that's worth a significant amount of credit, um, you really must use a, a lockdown browser so that students can't be fiddling about with things. Um, it's all happening inside their web browser, so if they had access to um, developer tools, uh, they could very easily, somewhat easily, cheat. Um, safe exam browser is um, a good open source option um, for a lockdown browser. Um, so before all this kicked off, um, we uh, used numbers throughout our maths and stats course, um, physics as well, um, and, the, and the, a variety of service courses that we teach. Um, and typically they would have large banks of practice material available throughout the duration of the course, um, which students could access when they want, um, just to get some practice. Um, uh, and they also quite often use these for revision. Um, the initial reason we started using the assessment was that we thought felt that students weren't doing any work up until the revision period. So this is just a way of um, prompting students to do some work. Um, and uh, our in-course assessments are worth a very small amount of course credit just to make sure that the students have done something. Um, some colleagues in the more scientific subjects use numbers to run labs. They get students to enter in um, data that they've measured um, and then they get asked some questions based on that data um, using the adaptive marking. Um, and then for the past few years, we've run one or two very high stakes final exams for modules uh, outside maths, um, which were invigilated. Um, we would have on the order of 300 students sitting down at once doing an exam. In lockdown, um, we decided um, for stage two and three, uh, they would still have to do handwritten, um, well, open book take home exams. But for stage one, because their results were only ever used to decide um, if they'd get through to stage two, um, they're not, they don't count towards their degree classification. We felt that e-assessment would be uh, appropriate, it would be okay to try it out. Um, the students got um, an exam for each module, uh, open for the entire exam period. They could do them as many times as they liked um, and they just had to get 60% to pass the module. Um, and we had a significant number of students doing these. Um, we had uh, about a thousand online at once on day one. Um, I think in total we've had just under 2,000 students uh, doing numbers exams this year. Um, so the way we did it, um, we put together a fairly large question writing team. You need more than one person at least, um, but because we had about a dozen uh, modules to support, um, we had uh, we enlisted uh, two of us from the e-learning unit. Um, we tried to enlist the lecturers to engage as much as possible designing the, the questions. Um, and we recruited some postgrads to actually implement the questions. Um, previously, we've 
side away from um, proofy kind of questions um, so to do with problem solving, but we had to assess these um, this year. Um, so you have to think very creatively about how you're going to assess um, understanding. Um, we used multiple choice quite a lot. Um, we'd look through things like presenting a proof and spot an error, but they're quite hard to set up so that the, the answer is unambiguous. Um, so we'll be writing something about what we did um, for question design. Um, it was really important to check everything works um, and in advance before the students access it. Um, we didn't let a single person write a question and declare it to be ready. Um, it would have to go through a, a couple of checkers, um, at least one of which was the module leader before it was uh, accepted. Um, particularly with randomized questions, you need to make sure that you're not going to throw up an instance of a question where, um, uh, where it just doesn't work or the marking goes wrong. Uh, and finally, we had lots of discussions about are the students going to cheat? Is it, is it all going to go wrong on day one? They'll all get 100% because they just uh, talk in WhatsApp groups. Um, we decided to give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, and that was the right decision, I think. Um, the score distribution has been pretty much um, what we hoped for. Um, we haven't had any reports of students um, uh, doing weird things. Um, but colleagues who did restrict what students could do even further um, have run into problems like um, not showing students uh, any feedback whatsoever like even scores at the end has meant that if there was a problem in marking um, only the lecturer can sort it out students wouldn't report it themselves um, and things like restricting navigation through the exam that's just going to throw up students who accidentally click a button and then realize they can't uh, go back and answer a question that they hadn't finished yet um, so we were fairly lax and I think, I think that was the right thing to do. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I had to say. Um, if you're interested in using numbers, um, there's the, the, here's some links to the numbers homepage. Um, within the documentation, um, we have a good set of tutorials that take you through the process of writing a question um, uh, and some stuff on good practice in question design, which is it's quite a difficult topic. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you wouldn't uh, immediately come up with. Um, we've written a post on our blog about how numbers can help um, during this crisis, just with a bit more information about what you need to get set up um, and ways you can use numbers. Um, and finally, I'll give a little plug for a, a conference that we're, we were already planning on running entirely online this year, um, and that's really worked out well for us. Um, e-assessment in mathematical sciences um, will be starting at the uh, end of the month and that's free to attend so uh, please have a look at that and I think that's it. Brilliant thank you very much uh, Christian for, uh, for that, that talk. Um, I think the questions are coming in uh, thick and fast uh, now with this one so you're going to kind of be uh, be busy sort of tapping away but I pulled out um, sort of five or six which I'll kind of ask you as there are sort of some common themes coming through. Um, but uh, Jeremy Leslie uh, in Leicester and Julia Gadecki uh, have asked about kind of are universities sort of sharing numbers? So in particular, the kind of the questions and the resources, do people kind of need to write their own or is there a repository of questions that they can use and adapt uh, within institutions? Yeah, um, the, the, the public numbers editor that we offer has quite an amount of uh, material offered under a Creative Commons license. Um, we have tried to publish all the stuff that we can um, that we've made for, at Newcastle under a Creative Commons license and other people have done that. Um, so yes, there is stuff you can find and reuse. Um, there's always problems with um, differences in notation between uh, lecturers. Um, but then also there's, there's a big quality control problem that for some people a question might be good enough but for other people, you might uh, say that formatting is not nice um, or the way that randomization works, um, you might not approve of. Um, so yes, there is there is material being shared, but um, you have to do some work deciding what's right to use. Right. Thank you. 
thank you, Christian. Um, a question from uh, Sally Barton, which is, how easily does it integrate with, say, an institutional virtual learning environment? Is it something that kind of colleagues can do, or does it need sort of specific IT support to make it embed properly with an institutional system? Yeah. Um, so initially, Numbers used um, SCORM protocol, which is supported by Blackboard and Moodle um, out of the box. Um, so if you use those, you can just start using Numbers without any intervention from your IT people. Um, but particularly Blackboard SCORM player has quite a few bugs that mean that data just goes missing. Um, so don't rely on that for anything high stakes. Um, the LTI connection is really the most robust way. Um, and that is software that you need to set up locally. Um, we don't offer that as a service, um, both because of resource requirements um, and also for data protection. We don't really want to be handling anyone else's data. Um, but again, that's open source and quite a few institutions have set that up um, quite straightforwardly. Um, there's, again, there's documentation that you can just send to your IT people and say, yeah, please set, set this up for us. Brilliant. Um, a question from uh, Vincenzo Mantova, which is, uh, how easy is it to actually kind of implement the, the, the feedback into an assessment? So if you've kind of already got an assessment, how easy is it to kind of code that feedback for, for exercises? Is, you know, how hard is it to sort of write the, the individual detailed feedback? Um, well, for if you're marking automatically, you, you're not going to give the kind of very individualized feedback that you would if you were marking by hand um, in response to a, a particular student's uh, answer. Um, but in terms of um, errors that you're expecting to come up, um, it's going to be easier in about a month's time um, <laughs> because the, the latest version of numbers that I'm in the process of releasing has a, a new feature for you can set up um, alternative answers to a, to a question um, and say if, if the student's answer matches this then give them however many marks and this particular message um, and that's pretty much as straightforward as I, I can imagine that process being. Um, but when you're writing things, don't underestimate how long it takes to write questions. And then if you start going into trying to imagine what mistakes the students are going to make, you can just spend any amount of time doing that. So work out a balance on how much time you want to spend putting in that kind of feedback. Um, a question from Matthew Scroggs, which is how good is numbers at kind of recognizing alternate but kind of correct answers? So the example he gave was five plus X versus X plus five. How, how good is it at determining that equivalence? Yeah, well, um, so the, the question of equivalence is really complicated. Um, um, the, the staff people could have discussed that yesterday. Um, the way numbers does it, the, the standard way, if you have a mathematical expression, it um, looks at the free variables in the expression, picks some random values for them, um, and then evaluates the student's answer against the expected answer. And if they produce the same thing, um, then they're considered equivalent and it's marked right. Um, if you then care about the exact form of the student's answer, you can stick in a, a pattern restriction. Um, we have quite a sophisticated pattern matching uh, syntax. Um, so you can say something like it needs to be factorized or it needs to be a fraction or things like that. Um, so uh, it will accept anything that evaluates to, that is equivalent to um, whatever you put as the expected answer, um, but then you can put further restrictions on that. Um, and then the final one, because I, I think you know, need to let you uh, have, a, have a breather after this before you get, get typing, um, is from Alison Voice up in Leeds, and it chimes in with a couple of other, other comments that, uh, you know, how well can you kind of integrate images and, and sort of build, um, as we perhaps saw yesterday from George, with that kind of build a course around this. So can you kind of embed images and other text and, and then have assessment boxes within there as well to kind of make this part of a sort of a, a package of delivery? Yeah, absolutely. Um... Yeah, we've, we've been doing that since the start. Um, I didn't, I, uh, I won't go back to a screen share, but um, one of our questions that um, we have this show steps thing, quite often we'll stick a, a video in there of a, a lecturer doing a similar example. Uh, it's very easy to put images in. Um, interactive graphics, if you've got the time to put them together, are even better. Um, so stuff like get the student to type in an equation of a curve and then plot that curve next to it. Um, so that kind of stuff, uh, yeah. That's, uh, Brilliant. Great. Thanks, thanks, Christian. Um, 